what you need tonight A little something to whet your appetite And it's gonna make you feel alright Sweet gravy and Carmen Kirk Check them out as they go to work c c congratulations on your new podcast Now open up a cannibal bass And blast, blast, blast And I hope you like this show. Wow. Wow, yeah. Ooh, uh, much better. Uh, welcome back to another <laughs> episode of Sweet Gravy. Carmen, thank you for being here. Oh, okay. You're welcome. I like how uh, Angelo Moore, he, what the, he said, open up a can of whoop ass and blast, blast, blast. Um, I feel like we gotta the song it says in the song, um what did it say? Congratulations on your Congratulations new podcast. On Our podcast new isn't new po- anymore. But every episode is new. Okay. But right? every okay. It's a celebration of every new episode. You know, this will be number seventy one. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. yeah. We've been going strong for a little bit. Number seven uh, but it's actually seventy two because one of the episodes got deleted somehow. Mm-hmm. So it's really 72. But yeah. with, uh, published at this moment in time, it'll be number 71. And it's interesting. On the audio platforms. Yeah, especially considering how we started with just a one microphone. That one there. Yeah, and now we do it like this. And yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the podcast world, uh, a friend of the uh, ours, past guest that we've had, Mm-hmm. Robert Ortega yeah. has started uh, doing his own podcast. It's called Different Beast. Mm-hmm. And you can find it on Google. You can find it on Spotify, Anchor, a lot of countless other places. Mm-hmm. But yeah, check it out. He's yeah, got an maybe episode. We'll, and- maybe we'll have him on again and he can speak about it on our on our uh yeah that would be great yeah, that'd be cool we hadn't uh, we he was one of the first people that uh we actually had as a guest because he had done some podcasting previously and uh yeah he was uh he was one of the people that we brought on and he was a good talk yeah for sure but we've had some good guests i think we were uh, both hotel men hotel maintenance engineers at the same time oh yeah and i was during tell the pandemic. His stories during about the hotel situation yeah, and and it cracked pandemic. me up because uh it was a situation we dealt with here but he's in the california's and it's a larger scale situation probably. and all these people were making their unemployment money and they were staying in hotels and stuff and mm-hmm. just trashing the place yeah yeah but yeah it was a good talk yeah, definitely. It's one of those things, too, where, like, I don't know how that works. I'm not sure how it works when you get the unemployment card. Uh-huh. But if you are able to use that and get a hotel room, yeah. they can't really go after your card if you fuck something up. I'm not sure how On the 1st and 15th, they can. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's right. one of those things. But I don't know if you're allowed to actually do that. I'm just saying that would be a little... Oh, I imagine so. That'd be a little loophole where I, you can get through. I was on unemployment way back in the uh, 2010, maybe. And, um, no, 2011. And uh, they just gave you like a, it was a Bank of America card. Oh, okay. You know, and then they put in the money and that money was there like once a week. Mm-hmm. I got a whole $70. Mm-hmm. It was great. Loved it. Yeah, what do you buy with $70 after hmm. we go to dinner and spend more than that? Well, you know, those are different times, Carmen. Those I know. Those are different times. Uh, the, the, the man of struggle I was then. You get fucking noodles and cheese with that? Yeah, noodles, cheese. We went through a break breakdown of my uh, young single life meals. Okay, so what Kirk is not saying out loud or not saying right now is he's not a single young man anymore. Any man anymore, yeah. Right, and you still cook like a young single man. Uh, You're talking about 
my Cheetos chicken sandwiches. Well, before that, so he made, <laughs> so before that, um, he made a, and I believe you used an Easy Mac too. I'm not sure what Mac it was. was the, it was disgusting. It was Easy Mac and it was unicorn shapes. Oh my gosh. Unicorn <laughs> shaped Easy Mac and cheese and pepperonis on white bread. Right. That's what you did. Well, and then you sent me that it picture. Was, it was a grilled cheese sandwich. It just it happened was, to have It was a grilled unicorn. mac and cheese sandwich with yeah, pepperoni. With pepperoni, right. And then you sent and that some, to me. And some of that Captain Moat mustard. And you it sent, was kind of like a a, a, a where, rare rabbit, well, a Welsh rabbit. Mm-mm. Like, you know, the grilled cheese sandwich? No. What's it called? Not that. <laughs> I'll tell you this. It's... I cook for a living. When you uh-huh. send me things like that, I'm just like, what is he at home cooking up? I think it's cool that you that uh, you come up with different stuff. And then recently, he made chicken breast crusted with jalapeno Cheetos. Jalapeno cheddar Cheetos, yeah. Yeah. Right. Because if you think about it, you fry chicken with like a cornmeal, right? Mm-hmm. And Cheetos are basically just cornmeal. So you ground up the Cheetos, you know? And then you just fry it up like you would a chicken sandwich. <laughs> and it was amazing. It was so good. <laughs> I wish I had some different lettuce because I use a spring mix and a spinach 50-50 mix. Yeah, and it was kind of stringy because it got hot from the uh, bread and gross. Well, we but had lettuce in there. You just if, didn't use if it. If we had a nice little thing of romaine, it would have been beautiful. You didn't look for it. There's romaine in there. I know. I saw that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a mess. That's so funny. So... Let's get into some stuff. Um, I want to talk about. I want to talk about this bird lady. Okay, you, we talked about the bird lady. Yeah, we you, talked about feeding her the birds in the park. She's do, she yeah. she's still out there. She's doing uh-huh. it again. You and I encounter her in the morning because that's when she does her dirt. Right. She comes out in the morning. And then she just throws food everywhere. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the dogs are chasing the birds. And then now you have an issue because all these birds trying to get the food. The dog, uh, the dogs in the park are chasing the birds. There mm-hmm. is just a complete shit show. Right. Like, why are you doing this? And you could tell other people are annoyed. Like, bitch, you just got shit on me because you wanted to feed the birds. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't understand what people' obsession is with About feeding, feeding the birds. Feeding birds, like right. these things that fly out of the goddamn sky and shit on people and you want to feed them uh-huh. like i just don't understand it, it yeah but they're me. so so mystical they're not mystical though they fly garmin yeah i literally was walking home with a co-worker and he was eating a slice of pizza and a bird tried to take it out of his hand and slap me in the face in the process mm-hmm. i was like don't be eating that shit next to me i These birds are reckless you are afraid of birds and we if we're walking to the old port of Portland from where we live, mm-hmm. we take different routes. Yeah. You I'm wanna, a creature of habit. I y- take the y- same route. You want to go all the way down a street into the other street where I kind of zigzag through the streets. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a, I, my route takes you through a parking lot. Right. Which is mostly empty. Yeah. You know, it's mostly empty and you can walk diagonally through the parking lot yeah. to get where you need to go. What does empty parking lots have? Birds. Exactly. And you don't like it because of the birds. Right. And I like to point at the birds. I like to whenever they fly over us, I like to like run like <laughs> like as if I was away from you. And you yell at me, you say, Stop it. Don't do that. Cause like it's you you like to mess with me. It's things you like to do to mess with me, uh-huh. and that's okay because I can get you back, and I'm better at it than you, you are. You think you're better at it than me? Yeah, getting me of back. Of course I am. Yeah, you're pretty good. I mean, I grew up with siblings. Uh-huh. That's all you do is fuck fuck with each other the right. whole fucking time. You come up with creative ways. Mm-hmm. Like when Taiwan was growing up and he was younger. Like, we were older then, so we were kind of past all the little petty bullshit games at that point. But he was young, so it, it was all new and fresh to him. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, my fucking God, he used to drive you crazy. Like, you're sitting there, like, watching TV, and he'd sneak up behind you and slap you on the back of the neck. Mm-hmm. Like, bah! like, oh, my <laughs> Like, what do you do 
this child, he's still playing childish games, but he's seven years younger than us. Right. So he thought it was awesome. You had enough of it. I've already had enough of it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe, I know I was being uh, sitted one time. My parents were away and I was at one of their neighbor's house for the weekend. And <laughs> I had uh, two two movies to to watch we i brought o- brought over two movies to watch and mm-hmm. um one of them was uh a gi joe uh movie it was a cart animated movie it was sergeant savage had just shown up and uh an action figure to reinvigorate the gi joe brand and mm-hmm. he had a little he had a, like a little film that went with it it was like an hour and something mm-hmm. and then there was something else i can't remember what it was like tom sawyer or something Huck Finn, mm-hmm. and he didn't want to watch the cartoon with me because it's for little kids, mm-hmm. right? They didn't make animation like they do today. Oh, where, I know. Where like you know, little me, I can be entertained watching these. Shows. I, I love the cartoons. Kirk liked the little cartoon movies, and then he cries too. <laughs> I cry. Yeah, I them. look over at Kirk, and he's like crying, or this little like kids movie yeah like, why are you crying they make it emotional <laughs> there are the things that they put on those little cartoons like soul mm-hmm. soul it is make you cry you was crying <laughs> and i was i was waiting on that look over at kirk i'm like uh-huh. you better stop fucking crying <laughs> yeah that was a sad movie he, <laughs> he went up to the thing mm-hmm. yeah i don't know it's uh yeah it gets you <laughs> you think so yeah yeah. Um uh, then we watched this new cool show. What is the metal metal work show? We metal watched? Shop Masters. Metal Shop Masters. If anybody's heard of it, uh or anybody's it's on watched Netflix. it. Netflix. It's definitely We sat we watched it a night. Yeah. We just watched the whole thing in a night. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it was really good though. It was uh interesting to see people welding and like building all the stuff out of metal and building their stuff out of metal and Yeah. Things are they got things floating in the air with metal. Like it was very interesting to mm-hmm. see these people like create all this stuff. Yeah, like it's one of those things that uh, it doesn't really. Uh, I don't come across it in my everyday life, so you right. never think about it until you see the show and you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah. I guess somebody has the to be doing these things. The things you can, the things that you can do, if you have the knowledge and the tools to do them. You know, right. Like, like oh, I can just you, make me a chair. You wouldn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can just make me a chair. Or right. I can just make this cool table, or I can just yeah. I can't make none of that stuff. You could, I, yeah, I could. If I w- if I wasn't with you, see, that's the thing. Like I'm a little bit uh, I don't know what the right word is, but um, I don't do things certain things because I'm with you. If I was by myself, I would do them. I would get uh-huh. like when I was by myself, I put all my furniture together from IKEA. And it, I had to read the instructions and do it. It uh-huh. took me a little while. Right. Putting my bookcase together and my table together and all that stuff. It was a little bit wobbly, but it worked. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> it, was it was from Ikea. Yeah, it was a little. I think the wobble comes with it. <laughs> yeah, if you, but I also might not put it together the best way. Yeah, either. maybe. But I actually sat there and put it together myself. Uh-huh. In this situation that we're together, I'm not putting things together. Right. You're doing that. You make me do it. Of course. Why would I do that? And you're here. Right. What's the point of being with a man if you putting shit together? That makes no sense. Maybe you... I'm cooking the dinner. You put the damn table together. Uh huh. That's just how it works. Okay. <laughs> well, you have dinner every night. You only got to put a table together once. Yeah, but I enjoy cooking. <laughs> That's something that I like to do. I actually take my mm. time and putting stuff together and just learning how to use this electric stove we have. <laughs> It shouldn't be too hard. It's just the stove, Carmen. It's electric, though. I hate electric stoves. You hate it. No, I like the. I need the gas. Like when I'm at work, whew, I yeah, feel so feel much better. better. Yeah, because I can. Cook What's on the a gas difference stove? between an electric and a gas stove? Well, with the gas stove, when you want something taken off the heat, you just turn it off. Right. With the electric stove, you turn it off. You're still boiling for five minutes. Yeah, but then you remove it. You have to. That's what I'm saying. It's right. more more that goes into it. And then you don't actually know, like, you just know, like, oh, six is medium. Then, like, I <laughs> yeah. talked to my there's aunt. A, there's a scale that goes bigger as the, the, 
the I intensity agree. of heat goes. I know, but it's still different than gas. Uh-huh. Gas, you can physically see it. Like with the with the stove, you with the electric, you can't. You don't. I don't like it. Uh-huh. My auntie, she gives me tips, and she's right. like, "This is what you do. Make sure you do it like this." Like she got it down pat. Uh-huh. Because even since we've been kids, she's always had an electric stove. Right. She's always been an electric stove lady, uh-huh. so she got it down packed. But my little cousin, uh, she still has a hard time with it sometimes. Right. But they, our little electric stoves is don't look nothing like theirs. Her electric stove is so expensive. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my god, well, she got this futuristic stove in her right. kitchen. Yeah, ours is pretty uh just basic. Basic. Yeah. She got the all black, nice upgraded ones. You mm-hmm. can't even see the eyes. You just know that they're there. Right. Like they're really cool. So I feel like she has an easier time because her stove is better. No. No, she started on a basic one like this though. Mm-hmm. And um But yeah. Still figuring that out, but whatever. Um, but yeah, the Metal Shop Masters. I really like that show. Mm-hmm. I encourage people to check it out if you a Netflix person. Yeah. Go on Netflix and check out Metal Shop Masters and and decide who you think is going to win. I feel like you know at the beginning, kind of with some of these competition shows, you can kind of fill out who's going to be the winner. At you the can kind of see who they're highlighting because at the end of the day, they put the show together pretty quickly. You know, right. And they kind of have to, you know. Yeah, they have to definitely. Bring out, like, you know, you can't have a person win the show that they didn't really feature in any of the episodes. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, I feel like everybody get a certain amount of a time on camera, for mm-hmm. sure, when you're in the show. But, like, like right now, um, we're watching an old episode of the British Baking Show. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of see from the beginning, like, how it's going. And I already kind of got the people picked that I think is going to win the show. Mm -hmm. Like, from the beginning, when you see little stuff, it's like the the aging man on the show is... Mm -hmm. I think he's my favorite. Well, he he won uh, Baker, Star Baker, the last episode we saw. He won Star Baker with a key lime pie. Yeah, with a key lime pie. But he almost dropped it. Like, he was all over yeah, the place. Yeah, he almost dropped it. He, this guy is literally but like... But they said it tasted great. But he, like, fumbles the entire time. Uh-huh. He looks like he's not going to make it. He always, he's only like... Oh, my uh, God. He's all over the place. He's, like, burning stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, then he won. Yeah. It was like, oh, my God. Like, how did he pull that off? Somehow. Right. And then the crazy part is, like, he had messed up the other challenges that right. day. Of that day, yeah. But because... He did that pie so good. That he still won Star enough. Baker. It, the pie was good enough to be the best. The pie was better. Uh-huh. Pretty much what you're saying is his pie was better than every single dessert y'all made for the whole day. Right. Like, Jesus Christ. Right. This pie was just too good. It was too good. I don't like key lime pie. Yeah. You? Um, I don't know. I had it once. I didn't really like it. But I was a, I was a different person back then. Yeah. yeah, you probably love it right now. <laughs> you like the sweets. Uh-huh. It's funny because I was just talking to um, to my friend Ariel on the phone, and we were talking about how uh, my little brother is addicted to sweets. And then we were talking about, like, at work. So at work, the baker. Your youngest brother. Yeah. Right. At work, the bacon and pastry person, like, most places they'll have cookies or they'll make cookies for whatever event or it might be part of a dessert or it might be part of a banquet event or anything like that and like the bacon and pastry person will make cookies Mm -hmm. and if you make cookies the best thing to do is to make a batch for the staff as well because they're going to steal them if you do they are going to take them and there's nothing you can do about it when Mm -hmm. people see cookies and they're unattended people go get one of those cookies and walk away real quick yep like and it's just nothing you can do about it. Like our maintenance guys will literally come in our bake shop and just take a cookie on their way out. Mm-hmm. Uh, working at the Double Tree uh, when I did, you know, the Double Tree has cookies. Mm-hmm. They give you check in and then they give you a cookie. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, "Here's would you like a Double Tree?" Oh, that's cookie? a they horrible. Got, they got like a little warmer at the uh, guest services desk. Oh, they have nice cookies, yeah. not just like okay. Yeah, they give you. A, they bake them. Mm-hmm. You know, right there, and then they put them in the warmer, and then as you come, you get a nice hot cookie. And 
you would see like the laundry girls would uh, be like, hey, they'd go to like the driver man because he was the guy that was responsible for the cookies, mm -hmm. the the sh the chauffeur, mm -hmm. and they'd be like, hey, yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. and he'd be walking through with the cookies and he'd have to give out like half the tray, mm -hmm. and just to the back of house people. Yeah, behind you, the scenes hotelians you know yeah you have to there's no way like you can avoid it like mm -hmm. unless you're watching those cookies the entire you're time gonna, they're going to come up you are going you're losing to losing cookies like, like i when i is worked at a huh is that stealing i don't know if <laughs> if cookie snatching is necessarily <laughs> stealing it's just one of those things that if a cookie look good people can't pass them up i know like it's something that people can't stay away from like, and i was telling ariel i was like Kirk will eat like one of the little Debbie uh, oatmeal cream pies. Mm -hmm. I was like, he eat it in one bite. That's <laughs> not true. That I was is like, not true. I was like, it's too small for his hand, and then he eat it in one bite. Well, she was the, like, the little, <laughs> the little tiny ones. Yeah, they like this big. She was like, because she was talking about uh, about Michael and how he eats cookies. I'm like, Michael used to literally inhale the cookies mm -hmm. <laughs> at the job, right. and then we would all get cussed out about it. Right whoever's fucking taking my cookies i'm gonna take your food and like yeah. she would freak out and it's like uh girl that's your brother-in-law still your cookies that's mm -hmm. an in-house matter y'all should be talking about that at home right. <laughs> yeah those uh those oatmeal cream pies uh they're uh, but then for a while they had a uh a peanut butter version of it yeah oh whew. <laughs> Uh, I, well, I I got tell the you, nutty buddies this I, time. I tell I you all the time. Know. I say keep that stuff out of the house. But you, always, I never buy it. You always, you always get these uh, these uh, candies and stuff. I'm like, oh, get it out of here. And then it'll sit inside. Of, it'll sit inside of the uh, the cupboard, the cabinet for a long time. Right until yeah, until one day. until one day you go, you're like, oh, maybe I'll like one of these, and then it's an empty box. <laughs> well i got the nutty buddies this time right because i know nutter you like butters. yeah the nutter butters because i know you like like peanut butter um but that's the thing sometimes you'll just randomly get the munchies that's mm -hmm. the reason that i buy them because yeah. you'll get the munchies and then you start looking through all the cabinets start mm -hmm. looking for stuff you're like i got the munchies right now i need to have something yeah, so right. that's why i get them because sometimes they, you got it you get a sweet tooth they say that whenever you get cravings like that it's because your body needs something like it needs like a thing that you're like craving, oh, like something. I thought it's because you're pregnant. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> but that's what, like, for a girl, so mm -hmm. well, maybe you're pregnant. Right. <laughs> you're just craving it. You craving the weird stuff. Right. Like somebody just put a online. I I don't know why people do this, and I don't know where. I know there's places in certain towns that actually sell them on their menu. So what? Um, Kool-Aid pickles mm -hmm. Like why do you want to put the Kool-Aid in the pickles yeah, And weird. people think that they're so good And everyone's mm -hmm. like Have you had these Kool-Aid pickles right. Like why do you want And you could put whatever flavor you want in them Like if you put the blue in them They'll dye the pickles blue mm -hmm. and, so, and purple and red Yeah and different <laughs> colors And people think I mean they do look beautiful uh -huh. But you just gotta be a You gotta be a How, how much are you gonna foil the cucumber I know, right? <laughs> like, damn. I uh, disrespecting. Me and my me and my buddy were hanging out one time, and his wife was pregnant, and we were uh, we were bouncing around Louisville at the time, and and uh, we wanted to get some White Castle, and there was a White Castle in the corner, and he had called his wife to pick us up because we needed to go home. And she picked us up from, from the White Castle, mm -hmm. and uh, she she was mad because I don't know something with her pregnancy. She didn't want to smell the White Castle. Oh yeah, but certain stuff will make your stomach it, upset. Her stomach was feeling queasy. She's mm -hmm. like, oh, I feel so bad. And <laughs> she's like, you guys stink like White Castle. I wanted to take some with us. But he was like, no, I can't take the White Castle. And she's like, you better not bring any White Castle inside of this car. <laughs> and we didn't, but we still smell like White Castle. Because you smell like White Castle when you leave a White Castle. You go to the bathroom the next day, smells like White Castle. White Castle is definitely, I mean, I could, uh, White Castles is good. But I've, my mom lives right around the corner uh -huh. 
Like literally, it's you right got, in their backyard. You got spoiled of the castles. Yeah, I'm kind of off of it because yeah. I've just had so many. It's just so. It's the closest restaurant. It's literally a two minute walk from her house, mm-hmm. so it's like so convenient and easy to just like pick right. up something. But then, like, I start going to the like I go to the liquor store. The liquor the liquor stores in Detroit, they started this trend. Not all of them, but a lot of them, where they'll like rent out a section of their uh store for like chicken for like chicken and for like uh yeah or they'll have like a little business that's just getting up and running and rent them a space inside the store Mm -hmm. and um i think that's very smart because it brings customers that want the food and then of course they're gonna get a juicer so or there it's gonna benefit both ways symbiotic yeah yeah so uh I was like, I'll go over there. They got some bomb mac and cheese. It's Stouffer's. Mm-hmm. You know it's Stouffer's. Right. <laughs> what? There's even an S in the plastic tray once you're done with it. Yeah, <laughs> but I actually love Stouffer's mac and cheese, so mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. So I. There was a uh, there was a fancy restaurant in Los Angeles at some point, and they were they, people were saying that it was the best vegetable lasagna. They got the best vegetable lasagna, mm-hmm. but it was like just like Marie Callender's or something mm-hmm. that they kind of doctored up, and then they got found out. Yeah, but it was like a high class like joint, you know. And yeah, that's what see, people you can you can pull that at a, a little corner liquor store. Uh-huh. They don't nobody cares. They just want they don't something. Care. They just want it. Like you're not expecting quality food when you buy it at the liquor store, right? But at a nice restaurant, and they're not making the lasagnas, and they're giving them. That's rude. Mm-hmm. We have a. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we'll get food that like you know is like frozen or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I've got a friend that will be like, oh, Frozen? Well, but he loves to go to uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, BW2s. Yeah. And, and get like, frozen food. And, and get frozen food without restaurant prices. Yeah. Like, like. <laughs> what? A, I don't I don't know if he thinks that they're like. Um, cutting the chickens. Yeah, cutting the chickens in house and then raising frying the them chickens. up. Yeah, they're raising right. the chickens, cutting them like <laughs> no, when you're doing that many wings, you have to get them in bo- frozen. There's mm-hmm. no way you could do that much chicken when your entire business is based off a of chicken. Right. There's no way you would be able to keep up. Uh-huh. Like every chicken only got two wings. <laughs> you got to buy it frozen. Right. So, yeah, absolutely. All that stuff, Buffalo Wild Wings, that shit's all frozen. I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, places... Use a lot of frozen food? They use a lot of frozen food, but they also use the same product. It's just the way that they use it is different. Right. You know, people are going through, you know, Cisco and, you know, what are some other sales services with food? Yeah, but I mean, it's it's the equipment that you have as well. If you're... Yeah, it, when you're at yeah the, it's what like, you do yeah. with it. Yeah. But in the end, the base product is, for a lot of places, is the same. Same shit. You could have just got it at the grocery store or right. something. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, sometimes we run out of stuff and go to the grocery store and get it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, like, weird. you could literally just just do it that way. But, yeah, I feel like, like, I know at our restaurant, we make mostly everything in-house. But we do have to order some stuff just because it'd be too expensive to not Mm -hmm. like some stuff you just have to order right but um i don't like that place selling that lasagna Mm -hmm. and passing it off as regular lasagna and it's not it's not hard to make lasagna yeah Yeah, i know but it was you know somebody was eating it and they were like you know that's really good i put some extra cheese on there Mm-hmm. You know, I put some uh, red flake on there. Mm-hmm. That would be real good. Mm-hmm. Now I could sell that to celebrities. And then he did. And then he got caught. Right. How do you think he got caught? I don't know. Somebody came in there and they was like, this is not right. And it was then- a Marie Callender's. Yeah. <laughs> it, but, okay, once you get caught, then what? What do you mean? Is it illegal? I don't think so. Exactly. Right. So you got caught. Now what? But the demand for it right you know drops down because people aren't gonna say hey you know i, I mean it cheapens your restaurant right. but i'm saying how did it get spread around did somebody go online and just start blasting them so, or something yeah. like that yeah 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 that's well it's kind of rude to like uh false advertise sure. that much you know what i mean right like uh like the whole fresh frozen thing like when we watch it like kitchen nightmares they're like oh yeah it's fresh frozen then fresh it's not frozen. fresh right. if it's fresh and frozen it was fresh and then frozen right. it's not fresh and frozen right 
it's either fresh or frozen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and every time you say fresh frozen, Gordon Ramsay is like, what the fuck is fresh what frozen? What does it mean? <laughs> what you know, mean? watching that uh, uh, Super Size Me 2 about the chickens mm-hmm. and like how uh, places can, uh, restaurants can uh, put their labels on things. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting to see how much room they have to call things what they want to call them. Yeah. Not actually what it is, but like what they want to call them. Yeah, you can manipulate a lot. Right. Yeah, for sure. Like, I know with like, because he had to farm his own chickens and he wanted, you know, chickens to be, he wanted his chickens to be like organic and Mm -hmm. no antibiotics and stuff. And they're like, well, we never really used antibiotics on chicken, really. Like, but it's always on like all the labels and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's not like a common practice. It's just something that people see, and then they're like, "Wow, you know?" Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna get this because it says it on there. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, my best part of one of my favorite parts on Kitchen Nightmares is when uh, they said uh, what they had on their soup of the day, mm-hmm. and then he was like. How long has the soup been here? And it was like, like when is, uh, what what was the soup yesterday? Like this one? Uh-huh. Like this been on, how long has this soup been on? Yeah. Oh, for like two weeks? Yeah, for like two weeks. Two, three and weeks. it's like a soup of the day changes. Every, every single day. day. <laughs> yeah. And like, then no. it was like, oh, I just thought it meant the soup of today. Well, like the soup of today, yeah. Like the, wh- oh my God, <laughs> that's such forced advertisement. Like, uh-huh. and we, it's a lot of places here that do soup of the day and they actually right. change their soup every single day. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. That is frustrating to do. That's a lot of work unless you're getting it out the back, mm-hmm. which a lot of people probably going to Karma Sutra and <laughs> getting it out the, I mean, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's an interesting one. It is. I tell you this much. Um, I tell you what restaurant I won't go to. What is it? I won't say the name because you say I shouldn't say the name because it's mean. Uh-huh. But we got this restaurant on our block and they got rats uh-huh. everywhere. They're infesting the block. Like, luckily, it's not by our end or down where we are. It's all the way down the street. But, like, they're infesting their entire corner where their restaurant is and other businesses and houses with rats. Rats that? everywhere. It's like... Put down some rat poison. Like, it looks like they're okay with them being there. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like there's any motivation to, like, oh, it's rat. I mean, I get it. They're from a different country. They're probably like, oh, mm-hmm. oh we just, we see those all the time. It's not a big deal. Like, I think Americans are a little more freaked out by certain things. and Rodents and stuff. Yeah, like, we're so, like, uh, prissy and spoiled. I'm like, yeah. ew, ew, ew. Yeah, but, like, yeah. people from other countries, they're used to that. That's right. Especially if you're from a place where it's more wildlife well, it, and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it's other. Kind of, it's also where you live. Like if you were, you walk down the streets of New York, you know, you're gonna see some rats, you know, here and there. Like yeah, in that's the true. and stuff. It's just it's what it is. Yeah. It just depends on where you're at. I told you, I told you about uh, the uh, the couple that I had met at Shannon's on Pine in Long Beach, where they were playing hockey with their roaches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they were playing hockey with well they had there was like a roach like walking on the thing and then they had a broom and they swept it into the vent and then they heard it go ding 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 ding, ding down the vent I, we talked about this before mm-hmm. and uh like there in that building they they had roaches like people it depends where you are like we don't have that stuff here i can't live like that right there's no way if this building. But had what roaches, do you do? After I'm you finding, sign, we're finding somewhere else to live. After you sign a lease and then you're here, and I'm gonna say, like, well, oh, we yeah. need to break this lease because your building is fucking infested, and mm-hmm. you didn't put that in the in was, the. You didn't. You didn't have a. Can we have a a roach clause, please? If, exactly. Like I, I swear to God, like I asked. Whenever I look for apartments or anything like that, I ask the tenants. I see tenants and I'm like, hey, what's, this? Hey, what's going on? This stuff in here. Like, what's Man. going on? Like, I need to know. Like, oh, no, it's clean in here. And mm-hmm. I look in their eyes to see if they're lying or not. <laughs> you look in their like, eyes? that might be the person that got the damn bugs. Right. You never know who you asking. But <laughs> I'm always, like, checking out reviews and stuff like that to mm-hmm. make sure because I cannot live like that. Mm-hmm. Like, we had a mouse in here. And... It freaked me out, mm-hmm. and I understand it is winter time that mice get into 
buildings like this and right. things like that. So that's going to happen once in a while. Mm-hmm. I'm okay because Kirk is here to take care of it. Right. But if I was by myself, I'm like, I got to move. <laughs> <You're going laughs> I got to here. Yeah. Yeah, it just depends. Depends on what you're what you're at. Yeah. You know, I had a uh, an apartment at one point and it uh the building was kind of gross, you know. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like just a it was uh not a not the nicest place, but the shower was powerful. <laughs> yeah, a powerful shower. <laughs> <laughs> it the did. refrigerator was cold and the yeah. shower was the powerful. Shower was, I don't know about the refrigerator being cold, but the shower was powerful. And it ran on like a a chill heat system, mm-hmm. so you couldn't like really control the temperature in your in your room. It was a studio apartment. Yeah, that's frustrating. I know uh, a lot I, of people who live like that. I had a window that would open. It was like this big. Jesus it it was like it was like a two foot, two two foot. It's a dungeon. Yeah, it was a little tiny thing. And whenever I left, they they didn't give me back my deposit because they said that my apartment smelled, and I was like, the whole building smells. <laughs> like, of course, my apartment smells. The whole building smells like it smells like what? Uh, it's just not good. Just didn't smell like good. That's all. But the hallway looked really nice, and they had a nice office for where you sign your lease. And I but imagine, the individual units wasn't nice. Nah. No, that's pretty false advertisement. Yeah. You're gonna put carpet in the hallways and a nice desk at the do- but front door. It was right in the center of downtown, you know? And uh they had a uh upstairs, you know, a a rooftop a little lounge area. That was cool. Mm-hmm. They had some neat amenities and then apparently after I left, they redid the whole place and made it really nice. Yeah. Charged triple the rent than that I used to pay. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. You already know how that goes. Right. Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting one. But that I think that's kind of rude to put nice carpet in a hallway, and then mm-hmm. the hallway look nice, and then you open up the Well, door. in the downstairs. Right. Not in the hallway. <laughs> of, of the apartments? Oh, that was a nice carpet. Oh. That was pretty bad carpet. <laughs> no. I, hate, I don't like carpet I like regular floors that I can clean myself uh-huh. Carpet gets so gross and nasty And like if you in an apartment Like first off we spill too much stuff on the floor Look how many times you like throw my caps To my t- uh, to my water bottles and stuff Across the room or whatever mm-hmm. Like it's the potential to spill stuff all the time You drink <laughs> coffee If you have tan colored carpet And Kirk drinks coffee I don't coffee, spill coffee anywhere Yes you do No Oh yeah, yeah. I've never oh, spilled yeah. a drop of coffee Oh yeah The only time I spill some coffee Is whenever my beard's too big And it kind of Goes off to the side oh. Yeah <laughs> So um, I'm in school right now And uh, We're doing A tailgating event I am part of the tailgating event For the school And our event is next weekend, and we went to go view the field where the actual event is going to be, so we kind of see what we are working on, uh-huh. working with. Boy, they got us out by Barnes. You're out by Barnes. Where it's perfect soccer field place. I know, but I guess I don't know what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. But that's not what I was expecting. Right. I'm not feeling the whole. I mean, it's just not what I was expecting. Uh-huh. I'm going to do the best. What I'm going to make the best you of it. You expected to be in like Yankee field, Stadium yeah, or something? I thought like, it was going to be in Yankee Stadium. Like, what did you want? I just, when I imagine tailgating, it don't look like the... the uh-huh. We need to find another name for this event. Right. Because that's what I tell the teacher. I'm like... Tailgating It's is before not the, the game. Why are we serving during the game? All right. And who saves food from a tailgate to feed the players at the end? Oh, is that what you're going to do? We have to... They're like... This is the whole thing. The guy from the athletics department who is helping us sponsor this event and helping us, like, get the tables and the tents and, like, uh-huh. all those things, the guy that is helping do all that stuff, he, um, he, um, my question was, how do you know who's, like, the people that's invited? Like, it's alumni, family, and friends. But they have so many fields it could be for random. It mm-hmm. could be random teams there, and people. People are going to see a tent, and people getting hot dogs from there. Right. What do you think they're going to do? They want the hot dog. They're gonna. Go, they're gonna assume that it's free. And and like, what way do you have to like keep them from coming in if you don't have any system where like stamps on your hand or like right. how do you control that? And he's like, pretty much an honor system. He's like, 
I feel like people will be uh, have integrity and people. Well, will you be would honest. like to think the best of people, you sure. Yeah, absolutely, and that's where you go wrong. Mm-hmm. If you if you give that's the thing, you give people the benefit of the doubt, you get fucked over every time. Not every time. Yes, you, most times. Not every time. You have to protect yourself. So uh-huh. now you want us to have food for 125 people, but then you just left us out to the public for anybody to mm-hmm. pick up food. It's like, hi, so we probably should put the food up for the players in the beginning because right. that food, I'm telling you, that food's going to go so quick. And Sorry, I was like, players. We got no food for you. Right. Right. And I'm like, well, is it like portion size? And it's like, just let people eat what they want. And if they want to come back multiple times, they can too. And it's right. like, dude, That's we're great. not, we're not going to have enough food. We're going to run out within like an hour. And then, So then you're done quicker. Yeah. So what's the big deal? Nothing. It's just like, what are, what are we doing? <laughs> Why are we putting you're, you're, It's a college thing I know You're You're gonna get some experience from it Yeah And you're gonna see how it works Kirk This that's ain't all. my first time doing an event I understand With but hot that's dogs what, and hamburgers but, but that's what you gotta do Yeah I know Kirk. Man The the teacher picked what event we are part of So I'm kinda glad that I got this particular event Maybe I wish I would've got the boat cruise instead mm-hmm. Either one of those But uh I'm glad I didn't get the gala Right. Our the seventy fifth anniversary at a school. Uh-huh. I'm, that's too much for me. That's not what you want. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. And then I don't have to probably dress up really nice for that. I don't mm-hmm. have to. I don't have any dress clothes. I need you to gotta go. get some. Yeah, I don't have to. <laughs> but yeah, is that it? Uh yeah. I mean, sure. What else you want to talk about? You want to talk about this Nick Cage prisoners of the? Nah, we'll line? get to it next time. All righty. Well, thank you guys for listening. Uh, thank you guys for listening to another episode of Sweet Gravy Podcast. If you have any questions or suggestions, please go to sweetgravypod at gmail.com. And you can check us out on all platforms, YouTube, everywhere. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye.